All right, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Rare Garage. Today we're gonna be doing front brakes on this Ford Explorer Sport Track 2005. Got a bunch of other stuff going on. You guys will see this Jeep video uh, coming out soon, but yeah, so we're gonna get to work, get some brakes done. Okay, so I uh, forgot to film, but I'll film on the other side. But I pulled the wheel bearings out, because uh, these brakes are the wheel bearing type, where the rotor houses the wheel bearings themselves. Um, the double tapered roller bearing. So I pulled all that stuff off. The uh, snout looks clean. The new rotor comes with the races installed and new lug nuts and stuff and uh, or studs and a uh, new tone wheel which is cool so all I gotta do is just pack these brand new bearings drop them in there hammer on this new seal same thing on the front side there is no seal on the front side but just grease this bearing put it up on the car and uh, I'll show you guys how to preload it here in a second but yeah that's what we're gonna do okay so now we're driving this seal in I got my little snap on seal driver and uh, I already just kind of set it in there nice and flush dropped in about halfway it's nice and flush with the backing just give it a little wipe down get this little bit of grease off of here. I'm gonna carb clean it actually anyways before I put it on there but uh you know clean up your job and she's good to go. Okay so we have our rotor all wiped down, our rear seal in and our rear bearing ready to go. About to put a little bit of grease on this guy. I just wiped it down. It's all nice and ready to go. Put a little grease on it and then we're gonna slap it up on here. So I literally uh I'm out of gloves. This sucks. I just used my last gloves packing all the wheel bearings. I should have done this before I took them off. Okay, so we put the uh, rotor up on the spindle and uh, we've packed inside of there as much as we can. We still don't have the front bearing in, which uh, I'm about to take. It's all packed and ready to go. I'm gonna just take it, throw it up in there, grab this grease, put it back. We basically uh, we have as much grease as we can pretty much fit in there right now. Which is what you want. You want it slammed full of grease. And you're gonna take your little lock washer over here, spacer, and uh, wipe it down first, because it's dirty. It's a dirty job too, guys. We could cut it off plenty of rags, ready to go. So throw that down there, so a little color washer. We're gonna take our nut, and wipe it off, wipe it down, we're gonna take it, we're gonna install it. But what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to spin it, and uh, it really only needs to be finger tight. Okay, so, like I said, snug it down, space to where you can't turn it anymore, it's tight. Alright, back it off a half turn, spin it. As you're spinning it, bring it back down to snug. Alright, and now on this third one, so it's all loose. Spinning it, we're just gonna go right there. And uh, honestly, you want to be able to break this with your finger. Like I even have that tight. So what I'm gonna do is back it off for a fourth time, go right to where it pops, and I'm gonna do this by hand because I know now because that ratchet I've taken out all the preload. And as you see, I can turn it by hand if I wanted to. So that's basically what you want. And then you take your little lock doodad. Throw this guy on it, and you throw a cotter pin through it, and that thing can't move. Throw this little cover on. Once you throw a cotter pin in it, and bend the cotter pin, and you're done. All right, so I have uh, my nice assortment of cotter pins, which I don't want to tip here, because they might all fall out. You can see a cotter pin. So we just find one that fits in there. That one's perfect. And we're just gonna bend this guy back. Take 
this guy, bend it back like that. Take this guy, bend it back like that so it can't come out, right? This guy can't turn, keeps it locked in place, keeps your preload good. Take our little cap guy, trusty handy dandy hammer. Tap it down until it's flush. You don't want to hit it too hard to where it crutches this, but just enough where it seats. All right, and that's it. Now we're gonna go ahead and reverse and throw our brake bracket back on. Get that tightened down, and then we're gonna install our new pads. Then we're gonna collapse the caliper, and we're gonna bolt the caliper on our sliders. Let's get this tight down. I'm gonna tighten that by hand, but you guys can figure that out, and I'm gonna jump to the next scene. Right, so these uh, these pads right here didn't come with clips, so I'm gonna reuse the clips, which is fine, as long as your clips are good. You also wanna look and see if there's any little feelers. Sometimes brake pads have like a little metal finger that comes off of them, and that's called a feeler, and that's supposed to scrape when your brake pads are done to let you know they're done. These do not, so there is no direction. But normally, if there was a little feeler, they normally go on the back side. And uh, I'm just gonna pop this back pad in. There it is, heard it, pop into place. Same with this one, you kinda do the lower side, tip it back, and they're just springs, so they kinda just, kinda wanna go in at an angle. There it is, so you saw that pop in. There it is, now we gotta compress this guy, which we're gonna take one of the old pads and a C-clamp and just clamp it. So to compress it, like I said, the two tools we use were these. We just set this up against the pistons. We use this big clamp over the top of it. Push them back. Okay, so I pulled the wheel off. We're working on the other side. It's just a 14 millimeter bolt to a socket to get these slider bolts out. And then the caliper comes off. Pull the uh, bolts out. Just wiggle the caliper up. I set it back here in the back so it doesn't dangle. Okay, now that the caliper's off for the bracket itself, it's two 15 millimeter bolts. One right here, and the one that I'm on, and then it comes off. Now that the bracket's off, we're gonna pull the caliper off. Pull this cap off with a screwdriver and a hammer. You just go like this, just a little screwdriver. Jam it in there. Wedge it out. I can do this with one hand. And then from here you can kinda just go around the edge and just keep kinda just pushing it out till it goes. I'm trying to do this one-handed, guys. Sorry, it's kind of retarded. But uh, that's what it looks like under there. There's a little cotter pin and your little dealio. Take the cotter pin off, take the bolt off, and then the whole thing comes off. All right, so as you can see, I got the other side back on. I got the safety on and the cotter pin in, just like the other side. I torqued it three times as I'm spinning it, backed it off, and then twisted it by my hand, finger tight. Put the cotter pin in, and we're done. Now we're gonna put this cap back on, like the other side. Just like I said, just a little hammer action put those guys back on now we're good we're gonna put that bracket back on brake pads back on and we're done all right what I was trying to show before but I kind of couldn't because I was trying to do it and hold it but you just go like this and you just squeeze the thing together and uh, alternate side to side if one pistons pushing in more than the other all right guys here she is all finished the 2005 Ford Explorer sport track um, I want to thank you guys for watching this video I hope you learned something about doing your brakes and uh, wheel bearings. And make sure to subscribe and like this video, comment. There will be more. See you guys soon. Rear out.